أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وأولى الأمر منكم و ريمايندر أولويز فور ماي سيلف يا ربي أنا عبدك العجيز الضعيف ومسكين الظالم والجهل and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence that Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem when we talk about Ibadur Rahman and this light where Allah describes that whom we have given a light they have a light and whom we have not given that light they can never have that light. Means this nur and this reality and this haqqaiq is not something achieved through the salah, through zakah, through the fasting, through the hajj. This is a grant from Allah a grant upon a soul that is ancient and that grant is always upon that soul. And our life is to seek out these ibadur rahman they are servants of that reality, they are the servants of that light and they have a different reality from all the other servants of Allah This nun wal qalam, when Allah in Holy Qur'an is saying, nun wal qalam, that Allah wants to stress the importance of the nun and the reality of that nur and swears by that noon that only Allah come into our lives and teach that noon is the secret of light. Nur al-Anwar wa Sirat al-Asrar, the secret of light and the light of every secret. And Allah swears by that noon wal qalam that by my Divinely Pen and awliyaullah come into our lives from the world of light. This is not the people from dunya trying to understand the heavens. Those are people on dunya they can pray a thousand years and they'll never elevate themselves into the heavens. Not their salah, not their zakah, not their saum, not their Ramadan, not their fasting, not their hajj. None of them and none of those actions grant you a mirage in which you uplift into the Divinely Presence. That those whom Allah already granted them that light, it's on their reality. Until they come into a maturity to even understand what Allah has granted them. Their lights are like a beam that are on earth but the reality is in Malakut. They are beaming their reality from Malakut upon this earth and who enters into their precincts will be dressed by it. Who eats with them, drink with them, watch them, participate with them, their light will pick them and transport them immediately into that Divine Presence. And everything that comes from them is from this Malakut reality. So sometimes in sci-fi movies they try to show you how to tell a transport and they say, beam me up Scotty like the Star Trek. They take down your molecular and particle being and immediately shoot you up into that Divinely Presence and reproduce you in that reality. It's not something that you go to different people and then to click here, click there. Our life was to find these Ibadur Rahman that their wujud is to serve our arsh istawa of Rahman has been placed as an authority upon the throne. It means this world of manifestation is under the authority of Sifat al-Rahman, Ibad al-Rahman or its servants of light. When Allah want us to know the reality of this Rahman Alif Lam Rahim Noon. Everything comes from a Rahim, everything comes from a, a womb and 
a, a non-existence into an existence, as soon as it manifests it becomes from this noon. Alif, Ram, Ra, Ha, Meem, Noon, Rahim. Rahim means womb. You guys know Arabic better than me, you're looking like you're, womb, you're yeah. confused. Rahim is womb. Huh? Womb. Rahim. The Rahim? Rahman. So the Rahim is the source of where it's coming, right? Ra, ha, mean. When it comes out, it came from unseen. It's coming from unseen, this existence. As soon as it comes, it's been given a noon, because now you see it. So everything in mulk that manifests is manifesting from the qudra and the reality of this noon. If no nur, no existence, it would still be in Allah's non-existent world that it yet not manifested. Its manifestation is the noon. Allah wants to draw its power and significance that that noon that you're all manifesting from in this world of mulk under the authority of Rahman, Allah swears by qalam. My qalam, so when my qalam writes, everything begins to manifest, kun fa yakun. This is dunya understanding. Heavenly understanding goes higher into the heart of Prophet and begin to describe, Allah has no pen. The qalam of Allah the ancient ancient qalam of Allah is the ancient tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad Qaf, Lam, Meem, Qaf wal Qur'an al-Majeed, Lam wa lisan al-Haq, Allah's ancient qul, Allah's ancient qul that nothing, not an angel, not a prophet not anything in creation can contain the, go, the qul of Allah Allah says, if we reveal the Qur'an onto a mountain, ghashya, it'll be dust. But the heart of Prophet is firm. Not the physical heart only, the soul of Prophet's heart. Manzar Qur'an in the world of light. That Allah's qul is continuously dressing that reality. As soon as it comes to the meme of Sayyidina Muhammad it becomes Allah's Divinely speech. Uncreated power of Allah moving through the power and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad becomes Allah's Divinely speech from the power of Holy Qur'an so that everything comes to life. That's why then they studied the Qur'an and they understood that Allah are describing everything is born from it, everything is brought to life from it, every kitab is in it, every reality is found within the Holy Qur'an. It is the source of qudra and power from Allah and moving onto this Divinely tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad because the world of light there is no physical tongue. This is a world of light in which the tongue is symbolic of the emission of truth and lights coming out. As soon as the meme of this haqqaiq speaks it's a noon, it's a noor that emanate throughout the universes come into existence, universes go out of existence by the revelation of this qalam. This is what Allah wants. When Allah says, that universe out, this universe in, it's by the holy speech of Sayyidina Muhammad Who else is giving the command? The commander-in-chief. What Ezza, what might is moving in that reality? And that's why with that reality every speech coming out 
And when it's going to manifest, because there's a speech that's not coming out. This is Allah's will. But the amr and the order of Allah that will manifest is a command that speak it. As soon as it's spoken by Sayyidina Muhammad it is under the noon and now it has a nur. And that's why these awliyaullah they represent the holy speech of Sayyidina Muhammad They represent Lisan al-Haqq. They are from Ibadul Rahman, they're not other categories of awliya but they represent the holy speech of Sayyidina Muhammad and they are the qalams of Sayyidina Muhammad As Allah has a qalam, these are the qalams of Sayyidina Muhammad that they carry the command of Prophet and every, every speech and every talk is of a Muhammadan reality. Because there are the means. Means then this is the realities of Ibadur Rahman to be dressed by these lights, blessed by these lights, to hold the ihtiram and to hold the respect for that reality. These are the, the dressings that dress all of creation. Its true reality can't even be spoken of what type of lights are emitting, what type of realities are emitting and where the source of those realities are coming from. So much so that Allah want to testify in Holy Qur'an that, Noon wal qalam, you have no idea what this noon is, you have no idea what this light is. So when they're teaching Ibadur Rahman, these are servants of that reality, they are the servants of the noon. And their life is to propagate this light and the propagation of this light is with their soul and with their speech. Everything being spoken by them is a light, that that light moves and dispels all darkness because it's from the haqq of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad as they speak and they breathe and they move it's a haqq that comes out and begin to shatter every type of falsehood. And that's why many people when they react they become crazy, they start to attack them because they were acting like they were good and clean. When the truth comes it hits them and every type of bad character and, and wicked and evilness comes out from people. It's not easy to be in that light. It requires good manners, good character, not to be crazy. Not to be angry, not to lose all your self-control because then you're showing that you don't have a respect for that light nor are you able to enter into that light. What's happening upon this earth is of a tremendous reality and we don't understand these realities, we just look at it from the people of form and say, oh look they got a disease, where it came from we don't know, we can't see it. Let's give some medicine on it and maybe it'll go away or at least reduce the pain. But for Malakut, you know something is happening. Their explanation and teachings of these realities is that when Sayyidina Musa salam was about to appear on earth, Pharaoh got word from his magicians the Nabi Musa is coming onto this earth, he'll come through a child from this Bani Israel soon. So Pharaoh thought he would be clever and began to slaughter all the male children. And every action of Allah has a positive and a negative. So these thousands of children that were slaughtered, it's negative and it's sin was dressed upon Pharaoh and he carried all the sin of that horrible action. But at the moment that they were struck there was an immense positive light on those children, churubin. The churubin reality that they did no wrong to deserve that, that Allah made them like shuhada, that not only shuhada but perfected lights of churubin. 
those perfected lights in the thousands, they were killed because they were Musa. They were not killed by, for any other reason. They were killed for the sake of Pharaoh's fear of the name Musa and that this is going to be a Musa, kill him. So its sin was given to Pharaoh, but its blessing and its hasanat of the churubin was given to Sayyidina Musa And the light of Sayyidina Musa because they described him like an electricity, very powerful presence and reality. Why? Because from Malakut he was surrounded by these churubin. The immensity of lights that were surrounding from this action that Pharaoh thought he was doing and that's why Allah always describes, the shaitans they plan and they think they're clever but Allah's plan already exists within their plan. Allah wrote the program, they don't know they're just enacting Allah's program. And the Prophet hit their heads, oh why we did like that, look how powerful Nabi Musa is. He's a result of those thousands of Musa's in churubin realities with no guna, no wrong, perfected immense light. If one rijal is like a thousand, imagine tens of thousands of Bani Isra how, how they were dressed with that light and how they were given their light and their allegiance to Sayyidina Musa and their Musa meant like electricity and his secret was the electricity for their kingdom. Right? He was the one who put their cap on their pyramid and he brought light and power to their whole kingdom. Pharaoh didn't want to release him because he was going to take the electricity away, he was going to take the power away from those pyramids. Now people want to know why is it happening like this? Means that Allah's azimat and Mawlana Shaykh was saying in his so back from 15 years ago we mentioned the other day. Allah want to show something but Allah's not in need to show Himself. Allah doesn't show Himself for this earth, He don't care for the earth. He wants to show for the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad That you know this Prophet how much I love him, his nation they all fast, they do all these actions. This light of his descendants that is entering into the earth Everybody go into your homes and the whole earth shut down, never in the history of this earth. No war, no nothing has done that. The whole earth was like a switch went off, go into your homes. Why? Allah wanted to show the ihtiram of Sayyidina Muhammad light coming in from his descendant, from his grandchildren. The light is coming, the sign and isharat of His presence is coming. Go into your home, take your, your balance and hisab of who you are. If you're bad you should know you're bad, there's no more grey coming out. If you're bad and you want to give yourself to badness, you're going to come out darkened. And if you're good and you give yourself to goodness, good action and good character, don't play with them, don't let them to punish and beat you with a stick to prove something. Allah's stick is out, you move left and right it's going to hit you in the head in, in a way that you can't imagine. You go towards the light, if you go towards the light you'll be dressed. So then when these bodies are dying and dying, don't think, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ رَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يُدْخِلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا Oh, when you see the day in which mankind comes in droves to the religion of Allah do you think that mankind Allah cares about their physical coming in making shahada in the mosque and then debating with you of this aqeedah and that aqeedah? This is deen of Allah, this is the fitna of shaitan. The deen of Allah is pure and perfected. Is maqam al ihsan, is a perfected religion. So then, awliyaullah are coming and teaching from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi that what Allah wanted 
is that when you see these souls start to come. Because the soul that dies of calamity, the calamity has already cleaned them. They are free from being bonded and, and grabbed in their graves because the dunya punished them already, cleansed them, washed them, granted them to be shuhada, granted them to be martyred if they have belief. It will clean them in which the soul is not confined and is standing at attention, waiting for an advice and a guidance from the kingdom of their Lord. At that time Allah describing, When you see all these souls on a daily basis from every hospital and everywhere they die, there are only Allah's nazar and soul upon them, bringing them all into the deen of Allah And Allah proof is they were forgiven. Praise Allah that how magnificent and munificent Allah that He says, I'm not going to go because this Akhar Zaman and all this creation is under the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad for my ihtiram and love for Prophet I'm not going to send them to Jahannam because there's the Ummah who accepted and the Ummah yet the dawah hasn't arrived. Now the dawah phase has started. If they don't want the dawah with their body, no problem. Allah will give the dawah on their soul. And that's why Allah describing them, praise me. And I'm the forgiving and, and most merciful one. Look at my forgiveness. That through their difficulty I granted them light and blessings to reach towards that reality and they come in droves. So it means every day thousands are coming into this reality, their light and their soul will be given to the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi Those lights will be the lights of guidance that guide humanity to the way of Allah go back to all their descendants and all their loved ones and begin to inspire within their homes because they're not confined. They're like this, the lights of awliya. That they're going into the homes guiding and pushing people, come to the reality, come to the reality to bring in and usher in an immense awakening upon this earth that the earth has never seen before. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.